next speaker is going to be Lori Seaman. Uh, Lori is with the Spark, Spark Hill Creek Watershed Alliance and also Straw Town Studio. Uh, she is going to speak about the Hudson River Estuary as an asset to this area. Uh, Hudson, River, um, Hudson River Estuary and have a straw bag. Lori. Thank you, George. An outdoor educator in Rockland County. I spent probably about 10 years taking young people out to learn about where they live and to learn about the streams and uh, and the river, the riverfront, and I spent a fair amount of time in Haverstraw Bay. And what I see is that Rockland County, although we are developed, we also have tremendous beauty and natural resources here that are really worth fighting for. And I appreciate going um, forth and growth today. I think the contrast is set up will be striking on the presentation I'm about to give you. Originally, John Lipscomb, the Riverkeeper boat captain, would have um, presented on the ecology, but he couldn't be here tonight. I've worked closely with John on this project, and also I'd like to acknowledge Margie Turin, uh, ecologist with Levant, and Pet Kurtz, also one of the co-leaders of our coalition. We've worked very, very tight together in the last few months looking at the um, environmental impacts, so I'd like to acknowledge them, and um, I'll be bringing in points from each of them. So. Haverstraw Bay is um, it's a three mile wide stretch of the Hudson River. It's the widest stretch of the Hudson River. And citing a desalinization plant on the shores of Haverstraw Bay would have implications that you have not realized yet, I'm sure. I'm going to present um, on this topic in three, three, top, three topic points. First, I'll talk about the ecology and the direct significance of Haverstraw Bay for Rockland County and for the Atlantic coastal fisheries. Then I'll present on the threats to Haverstraw Bay proposed by the desalinization plant. And third, I will talk about breaking the precedence of taking from nature. This is a picture of the Hudson River watershed. The green line defines all the water that runs from high elevations into the Hudson River. It's a, it's a, it's a, a, a national heritage river, and it has a lot of the American history has been um, is derived out of the Hudson River. <clears throat> um, go back if you would, please. Haverstraw Bay is the wide area that you see down towards uh, the lower section of the river. And to launch into this area of my presentation, I'd like to read a quote from Maya Mimesto. She's the clear, one of the Clearwater ship captains who really knows the river. I asked Maya, what do you think about Haverstraw Bay? She says, Haverstraw Bay is one of the most beautiful stretches of the Hudson River. The majesty of the estuary as it opens into this three mile wide bay is unparalleled anywhere from the Adirondacks to New York Harbor. Admiring humans <clears throat> and delicate aquatic communities flock to Haverstraw Bay for the spectacular scenery and unique habitat it provides. Rockland County is, uh, and Westchester are the two shores of the Haverstraw Bay section of the Hudson River. The, Bay is what's known as a nursery for the Hudson River and for the, for the whole Hudson River estuary. And the notion of continuing to add industrial projects to this sensitive area of the river seriously needs to be questioned in this day and age. So many of the industrial facilities that have been placed historically here are failing. And they're the very thing that put Haverstraw in the economic straits that it's in presently. John Lipscomb asked, why would you want to do that again? It's the very thing that got you in that situation in the first place economically. If you go to the next slide, George. <clears throat> Not only is that a lovely notion, what I just said to you, but it's been, it's documented, it's officially documented the <clears throat> Haverstraw Bay has been designated irreplaceable habitat by the New York State Department of State Division of Coastal Resources. 
It has received the highest rating for a significant coastal fish and wildlife habitat in the entire Hudson River estuary. It's significant, especially for the Atlantic coastal fisheries, which depend on healthy estuaries and healthy bays to produce the populations to sustain life in the oceans. I'm going to read one more quote, and this is from the study, the Hudson River Estuary Designation Study. Fish populations in this level, fish population levels in this area are unusual in the northeastern U.S. Haverstraw Bay is a critical habitat for most estuary independent fisheries originating, originating from the Hudson River. Consequently, commercial and recreational fisheries throughout the North Atlantic depend on or benefit from these biological inputs from the Hudson River estuary. And we say, before taking risks with such a productive ecosystem, withdrawing fresh water and discharging toxins and brine in this critical area, we should be prioritizing our sustainable alternatives. <coughs> there are 33 significant designated sites on the, in the Hudson River estuary. Rockland County has five of them, between Piermont and Haverstraw. We, we are supposed to be the stewards of five of these biologically sensitive areas. There's three on the Westchester side. That's a wake-up call for me. When I learned that, I couldn't believe it. I've lived in Rockland County for about eight years before I knew that. And now when I go to the river, I just marvel knowing what's going on under the, under the water. And because I work with kids, I think, you know, sometimes, you know, in their terms, I think if you could lift the, the lid off the river, what would you see down there? Well, first of all, you wouldn't be able to see much because what people think is polluted in our Hudson River, it's actually nutrient-rich water. That murky green water that people are concerned about, it's one of the richest estuaries on the planet. What you're looking at is, is a nutrient-laden water body that has all the nutrients coming down from our beautiful upland woods. Rockland County is in the hardwood capital of the world. That means we have the largest variety of hardwood trees and all those woodlands that have the trees on our hilltops that need to be protected from development is where the nutrients come to nourish Haverstraw Bay. And you probably don't know that a river can't produce its own nutrients to, to, to um, support the life. It's, a, it's an entirely huge ecosystem. And when we're looking at our hilltops, we need to protect them. The developments that are taking big lots and, and it's something as part of this equation. So this wide bays area, one of the things that makes it so unique is its very physical uh, nature. It's very shallow there. If you could back up one moment. Uh, I was doing the right thing. If you look at the profile of our river, you see how it's narrow coming down. It goes to like, you know, up the like garrison up in that way. It's very narrow. It's fast, deep moving water. And it comes down to Stony Point and it's narrow. And there's a sill at the bottom of the river where it, the water hits and it deposits sediment on the other side, and also the water hits really wide. And that very shallow area is where the sunlight hits the bottom, and so there's a lot of plant life. It's where the bottom is very soft and, and sediment and is perfect for certain fish for a feeding area. It's also the salt front. The Hudson River between um, Battery Park and, and Albany, it's only a two foot elevation difference. That's why the river pushes so far up in our estuary. It's called the river that flows both ways and then you can took by the Native Indians who also thought Hagestraw Bay was paradise. It was so rich with fish. And so you have that kind of a, a environment and it supports life like no other. There's other reasons, uh, there's other amazing features about it too. I'm sure you want to know them all because it's so interesting now. Um, but I'm going to move on to my topic. So um, Haverstraw Bay, if you were to lift the lid, what you would see under there is um, bay anchovy, which is just now arriving now from the ocean to spawn. It's an annual event. You would see perch and tomcod, alewife, blue crab, carp, silver sides, flounder. The list of fish that, that need Haverstraw Bay is so extensive. And there are, a lot of, there are species that are federally endangered there. There's threatened species. And most, most exciting for us in the coalition, three weeks ago, the Atlantic sturgeon, the emblematic fish of the Hudson River, was designated federally endangered. And Haverstraw Bay is one of its primary survival habitats. It is where this fish overwinters, and it's, where, it's the nursery for the fish. <clears throat> 
The Atlantic sturgeon needs to become about 18 to 21 years old to spawn. So the nursery area for it to be a juvenile is the most important place to ensure the survival of this species, and that's Haverstraw Bay. I spoke to Chris Bowser from the DC Hudson River Estuary Program. I also work with them on the eel migration monitoring study in the, in the Haverstraw Bay in Minisiango. And he was so excited about that. He said, Lori, he said, that's where all the, all the scientists go, Haverstraw Bay, to study the sturgeon. That's where we go to tag them. The intake valve for this desal plant will be very close to the area where the sturgeon come and where the, um, where the, the zooplankton is that all of the fish, the, the food chain is built upon. So part of that food chain, too, are the raptors. The landfill in Haverstraw is surprisingly, you wouldn't expect that, but a landfill has become primary habitat. It's an undisturbed area, so the, the, the raptors are there, and the whole food chain complex is, is quite active, and we're trying to bring back many of these species. The eagle is threatened still. Next picture of our beautiful sturgeon. That's a baby Atlantic sturgeon that's from Haverstraw Bay. That large, uh, the large um, striped bass that he was holding before it was also an Avastron Bay. Next. So this is the site. I'm going to speed right through this now. But um, if you look, that is, that's the size of the area we're talking about. This really important Atlantic coastal area, look how small it is. United Water, if they would have their way and profit off our water, which they will get for free, which John Lipscomb wants me to point out, when they do the cost-benefit analysis, it's not really a comparative. They're taking free water from the Hudson River. The Hudson River's not getting a dime, right? <laughs> Nature is subsidizing United Water's plans for making great global profits. Not a good idea for Rockland. If you see where the, the little white chute is that goes into the river there, that's the area where the intake valves would be. And they'd like to site the, the um, proposed on that landfill area, the lower right corner, they would position the um, desal plant up in there. They've got to put pipes all through that area. Yeah. Pipe the water in from the river, pipe it back to the river. I'm not going to go into the mechanics of it, but just take a look at that picture and imagine all this activity going on down there. And one thing we know about pipes, pipes is that they leak. Next slide, please. The piping is, is of major consideration. The water will be uh, headed will head into a wastewater treatment plant, and there's areas there's lots of areas of environmental concerns around that as well. Go ahead, George, or do you again. This is one of the small creatures that would be sucked into the intake valve. It's called impingement and entrainment when small fish and zooplankton are caught in the intake nets. Every every bit of water that's pulled in, every creature dies. And you might look, John Lipson wants to point out also, they're saying 10 million gallons a day. It sounds like a small figure, but you, you, you multiply that out, it is not a small figure. Every single day, every day of the year, and right now we're talking about for all the time. And that's a great concern because <clears throat> the, zoo, the small creatures are actually a really important part of the system. I spoke to someone at Bowline who um, said, if you could see what, what is killed on these screens, it should never be allowed any longer. So lastly, I'd like to talk about changing the precedent. <clears throat> We're so used to this approach of taking from the natural world, we don't even see ourselves doing it any longer. If we want the ocean to be healthy, we need a healthy estuary. And if we need a healthy estuary, we need a healthy have a straw bay. And not only the Department of State has acknowledged having straw bay significance, but the Hudson River Estuary Program is working very hard to bring back the goose populations. The Rockland County Comprehensive Plan lists Haverstraw Bay as one of our most precious natural resources to be protected. It suggests an estuary learning center would be appropriate activity there for there in the future. I totally agree. John Lipscomb tipped me off to the fact that the Obama Initiative of 2010 asked for the Americans to become stewards of the oceans, our coasts, and the Great Lakes. Let's, let's see that happen. And <clears throat> there are other 
options that we'll be starting to talk about tonight. So lastly, the ask is that you come out for the, <clears throat> for the hearing, the DEC hearing is at March 6th, do I have my date right, George? There will be two sessions at 2 o'clock and at 6 o'clock on the same day. Please sign up to speak or support the people that do speak. Come out and let the DEC know that we do not want United Water to take our river water for our drinking water under these circumstances. We want to reuse the water that we have. We want to strengthen our communities by becoming aware about our water. Water where communities are strong. It makes the economy strong. Everything about this plant stands to weaken our, our county and burden us with costs which are just unbearable. And lastly is the, is the energy intensive, intensiveness of it. All of this will be happening, that would be impacting the river, but also will be having a global implication through the high energy costs. So I really urge you to continue to learn more. Look at our website. We're trying to put up content every day on our new website to support you in writing your comments. Thank you.